Hey everybody, it's Tim Lampley here at STL TV. Well, he's been cracking us up on stage and screen for years. His podcast and live shows have had us rolling in laughter. He began his career on Def Comedy Jam, then went on to host several MTV programs, and even taught us all how to be players. This weekend, he's in St. Louis. Welcome to none other than the very funny uh, Bill Bellamy. Thank What's you, up, Tim. brother? What's up, man? How are you? It's a pleasure to be here, dog. I'm really excited to be out here in the summertime. The weather is very muggy, but very, very nice. Very, very nice. So I love it in the STL. Well, it's good to have you here. Mm -hmm. Now, you've had quite the career, mm -hmm. and from stand-up to acting, and I want you to walk us through a little bit of those early days in Jersey wow. and prep school. Were you one of the guys <laughs> who sat in the back and yeah. made fun of everybody that I was the, the I was the king of the cafeteria. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, when I was a kid, you know, especially in high school, you know, that was where we all would sit at a table, you know what I mean, and we'd talk trash or whatever. And I was the king of finding out stuff about your family, <laughs> finding out stuff that you didn't want people to know. And if you start talking, I hit it with, let's not talk about your drunk daddy. You know, I'd be like, <laughs> I used to have all these little fast ones. People were like, yo, leave. Yo, don't mess with Bill, man, Bill crazy. Go to the office. That's yeah. probably what they were saying to you. Yeah. Did you get kicked out for real? Yeah. You did? No, yeah. No, yeah. you did. I didn't get kicked out of high school, but no, <laughs> you, I got you, in trouble you, quite a bit. Yeah, you seem like one of those who kind of throw something and then hide and be like, no. Yeah, wait, well, what I would wait, do, though, because I was so fast mm -hmm. and not, not knowing, like, I could be a comedian, I was just really quick with it. Like, you know, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. I was always like, if you say something, I say something, <laughs> right? And so I was like, dang, man, I'm pretty fast. I didn't know years later you could be a comedian. I was just always witty. You know what gets me is your laugh, man. You have the craziest laugh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so who who made you laugh growing up? I mean, besides Richard Pryor, because I know you're going to say oh, Richard Pryor. Oh, well, uh, my dad, my mom, they just were country and just from the South. And all these really funny sayings, they used to make me laugh. And then, you know, as far as comedians, Robin Williams, Sinbad, Bernie Mac, um, you know, Bill Cosby, um, George Carlin, like these guys. Before were, that, Red Fox. Red Fox, you know, was brilliant. I mean, I used to watch yeah. Sanford and Son all the time. The Jeffersons, yeah. you know. I think it's absolutely wild that you got the chance to sit down and talk to Michael Jackson. Yeah. The King of Pop. Yes. Uh, and you introduced his history album to the world. Correct. Uh, why did MTV choose you for that? Michael chose me. <laughs> uh, that's what happened, because I did an interview with Janet. Like, Janet and I did maybe, like, four or five different types of interviews, and she was always, you know, so comfortable with me. And um, when I met Michael the first time was at the Video Music Awards. And uh, Janet and Michael, if you go back and look at the video, you'll see me on stage with Biggie. And we give the Video Vanguard Award to Janet and Michael the first time they ever teamed up for Scream, right? So backstage, Mike was like, I love what you do with Jen. You know, you guys are fun and you're just so good and you're great. I want you to do my interview. And I'll <laughs> I like make, your impression. Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, I'll make it happen. Yeah, I want you to be, I want you to be, and he, like, he was thinking about, like, he was going to call somebody to call somebody. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, they were like, Michael Jackson <laughs> said that you're going to interview him for his album. I said, oh! <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he really made it happen. What did you, when you look back to that interview, what is it that you wish you would have asked him that you didn't? Well, I wanted to ask Michael, what was it like to be a child star? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to, I had a bunch of questions for him that were the questions that I wanted to know as a child. And then I was thinking of the mind of the fans, mm -hmm. right? And I just wanted to have this interview that he would give to me that was so personal. He did answer some of them, but like I wanted to know what is it like to be eight years old and be the star of your I mean, family? Stop. Like that, that's like um, beyond like what, how could you be that talented at such an early age? Do your homework, go to school, and be the star of your whole family. It's crazy. What behind the scenes can you tell us about interviewing Michael Jackson? Anything at all? He had real because security. Oh, really? Yeah. Because like your security? Yeah. <laughs> Those two people you have? Ah! No. <laughs> I, I, I interviewed um, Luther Vandross mm. way back when, one of my first celebrity interviews. And I recall that he didn't want us to record him walking in the room. Mm. And that always stood out in my mind 
that he was very conscious of the camera being on him as he walked into the room, and they didn't want that. Yeah, so I, 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 I seen some stars like you can't look at them and stuff in the hallway or something. But you know me, I'll be like, <laughs> I mean, you right there. No. <laughs> That's how silly I am. I'll be like, I ain't looking at you, you looking at me. And then you went on tour with Janet Jackson, too. Yeah, yeah so I went on um, the Velvet Rope tour with her, and um, she, shout out to Janet, love her to death. She just really was very helpful and instrumental in my career because, uh, you know, she just thought I was really, really funny. They saw me on Def Comedy Jam and all that good stuff. And, and she was like, Bill, I want you to come out on the road, man. It would be cool to have a comedian. Um, Mick Condition was initially on the tour, and then Mick Condition jumped on another one, and then it made room for me to be the host yeah. and do stand-up. Awesome. So then you popularized later on as you moved from, from, from stand-up to acting, mm -hmm. and then you were in a movie and several movies and so forth and so on, but you popularized the term, uh, then made a movie about it. Uh, well, the term you're talking about is booty call. And, uh, <laughs> Where did that come from? So booty call basically came from the joke that I was doing about Friday nights. And, you know, it's like I just had a new bachelor pad. And, and the, the joke... Wow. The joke new is about bachelor being pad. single. Was... <laughs> the, the, the joke is like being single and, like, excited to have a girl come by, like, on a Friday night because you got this cool place and you wanted to see it, right? But back then, you know, we didn't have swipe on the phone and, you know, you can call. And we back... You had to call on a phone. And you had... Back then, we had Rolodexes. I don't know if you remember. And when you go into an office, you had the Rolodex. So I, in my mind, I just made my Rolodex the, like, the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so all the girls would just be rolling like this, and I would stop, and I'd be like, yo, that's Pam. Too many kids. <laughs> and I, so I used to do the joke in the club, and it used to kill. I didn't know... 25 years later, people be saying booty call again, but it's just a fun way to say what we do anyway. That's you know? funny. So then we move on to you and any given Sunday. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you stop LL Cool J and Jamie Foxx from fighting? Why didn't you jump in, in the middle that? of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was it was a situation that you know I guess was building up and. You know, very, very, very... People don't know this. This happened on yeah, set. Yeah, this is happened on set in 1999, maybe. And um, the thing that was really interesting was because in the movie, it's supposed to be confrontational. You got three stars. You got me, I'm the receiver, Jimmy Sanderson. I think it's my team. Then, you know, Todd Smith, you know, he it's his team. Jamie's the new you know, rookie quarterback, he wants it to be his team. So it's all this, like, you know, bravado and sort of testosterone just bubbling anyway. Right. And that's supposed to be in the movie. We didn't know it was going to get action. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it became, the you know, the, the, the Bud, the Crawford, and the Spence fight in the movie, you know? <laughs> Who won? I don't want to talk about it, but <laughs> I'm just going to say, leave rappers alone. <laughs> LL won. That's what it is. Hey. <laughs> So you're stand up here and on tour. You're on tour, right? Yes. Uh, are you talking anything uh, related to AI? Are you talking anything about AI? Because that's the latest thing. A that's AI happening. right now, I'm going to tell you right now, ladies, y'all better get y'all life together. I'm telling you, y'all got three summers. All the women out there, this AI about to shut y'all down. Let me tell you what I learned about AI. AI don't talk back. It just do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that, I don't know. I don't know. I, you, today, no, no, that. no. AI, and the answer is. <laughs> so women, y'all better, better shut it down. I want women to come together and shut down AI. Because if not, y'all out of business. I, you know what? Listen. <laughs> she laughed. AI is crazy. It so, is crazy. So let me just tell you. I used it to write a joke in the style of Bill Bellamy. Yes. Sorry. So, here's the joke. Let me read this. You wrote it. You yeah, asked AI to write you a joke yes, in my, about in my Bill voice? Bellamy. Yes. Oh, snap. Let me see what AI talking about. All right. Let me see on the prompter. Roll that a little bit. Roll it, better, it up. It better it be up. good, too. Okay. So, here's what it said. It said, first, you were sitting in a parked car. Mm -hmm. And then it says, now, here's the thing about dating crazy people. So in, in, in the AI, I put Bill Bellamy talks about dating crazy people. Oh, wow. So it says, here's the thing about dating crazy people. They always love a good argument. 
and then it cuts, then it says, cut to a clip of Bill in a car pretending to have an argument. So I guess you are pretending to have an argument. What? Then it says, you're saying, this woman I dated, she would argue about everything from politics to the proper way to squeeze toothpaste. It was like conversational judo, but with no winners. Needless to say, I learned how to pick my battles. Mm. That was corny. That was corny. That yeah. wasn't the real Bill yeah. Bellamy. But, that was but it's trying to that write was, in your that style, though, right? That was Phil Bellamy, y'all. Does, right. does, that, <laughs> does that make you afraid, though, that there is Yo, something Yo, I can, used... You know? Literally, I did it to see, because uh, my road manager turned me on to this AI thing, right? So we was at a radio station. He was like, yo, Bill, this thing crazy right here. You could just add uh, Chad GPT or whatever and ask him whatever. Yeah. I said, Chad GPT, can you write me a song about heartbreak in Drake's voice. The song was done in 13 seconds. Wow. I said, wow. And how'd it sound? It, it was good. It was good. I, 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 I was shocked that it was like, it took his voice, <laughs> morphed wow. it, and it wrote a song. In verses, mm. in like, yeah, uh, all that, yeah, uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> I was like, God, they put the uh-huhs in there. Good Lord. So what's next for Bill Bellamy? Uh, several things. I have a new book out right now called Top Billing. You're so, an author? So now I'm an author. Does and anybody I can't, know I can't believe this brother it. is also an author? I'm an author, man. So uh, Top Billing, stories of laughter, life lessons, and triumph. And uh, it's just about my life, man. It's like, you know, the choices that I've, I made, you know, the things that happened, things that I was like, wow, I learned from, you know, and, and overcome. You know, people always think, being an entertainer is so easy, you know? You have ups and downs, it's like a stock, you know? You rise, you fall, whatever. You just wanna be in it for the long run. Yeah. You wanna yeah. believe in yourself. You wanna visualize what you want to see and feel it and um, attract that energy. I'm a firm believer in that. But also too, man, just to inspire my fans. You know, I want, I'm like a little kid from the hood, bro. Like a kid that, you know, people didn't know I was gonna be talented, people didn't know. I was gonna, you know, get out the hood and mm. make it big, right? So I wanna be an inspiration to the little inner city kids that, you know, we, we can do anything if we if we dream big enough, mm. you know, if you work hard enough, you know. It's when possible. they saw you on the Apollo, they knew you were going places. They was like, Bill, that's Bill Bill! <laughs> <laughs> that's a little they used to call me back then Billy. That's a little Billy. <laughs> oh man, he me making it. <laughs> You can catch Bill Bellamy Friday and Saturday at the Helium Club here in St. Louis or in a city near you. Bill, thank you for coming, thank man. You I really man, appreciate I this. Like was so much fun. This is like a real it's been cute an absolute little, <laughs> man, this thing real. The arch is even real here. I like that. Until next time, this is Tim Lampley signing off for STL TV. <laughs> Brother, you are so good.